for your post joins us now with a look at the realistic possibility, Dave, that the Flyers have a run left in them. It seems that this was a death blow for them this past weekend. Yeah, I think that the loss to Toronto on Thursday took a lot of the wind out of their sails. And Saturday at Boston took all but the rest of it. There may be a, just a small hope now, but uh, as far out as they are, with, even with 15 games left, I know that sounds like a lot of points, 30 points uh, that could be had, but when a team stops controlling its own destiny, it becomes really difficult, and that's the position the Flyers are in now, and they've, they've just got too many teams uh, between them and that last wild card spot. Yeah, Dave, uh, they're coming off Saturday, that 2-1 loss to the Bruins where Brandon Manning with 5.6 seconds left. Uh, kind of talk about what happened in that play there. And, and really, I mean, it, it's a play that you look back at and say, wow, that co obviously cut cost them the game and potentially cost them at any shot at making the playoffs. So what happened on that play? Yeah, so – you know, the, the Boston Bruins forward is just along the boards. They're throwing a, a Hail Mary lob on the net. And I think the defensemen are kind of taught if you're going to block a shot, get all of it. Don't get some of it. And Brandon Manning tried to go at it with his stick. And that's just the instinct of a defenseman, a player who's that close to the net, who can see a shot coming, especially uh, an off-speed pitch like that one, which, uh, again, wasn't exactly a snipe from, from off the boards that was – he was picking his corner. Drew Stafford just threw that puck on net, and Brandon Manning thought he could get some of it, and he did get some of it, but put it in the wrong direction. Uh, it's one of those things that has just been a series of really terrible bounces for the Flyers this year. That one's probably the worst of them. Uh, this team always talks about, you know, working for your bounces. I don't know how you do that. I don't think that's a real thing. I think that's just yet another hockey cliche. But they really have had some bad luck, and, and that's probably uh, the worst of it that you've seen all season long. Dave Isaac with us, Flyers and Blue Jackets tonight. Dave, the outcome might have been different if Braden Shen's first period goal had not been taken off the board because of sort of what I thought was a strange call from the referee. He jammed in the rebound, but then there's this rule that he intended to blow his whistle. What did you see on that play, and how do you explain what that rule is? There's no explaining it. That's a terrible call. Uh, Mark Jonette was standing on the back of the net. He knew he knew exactly what was going on, and his whistle wasn't anywhere near his mouth. He waited until Braden Shen had uh, put the puck in the net and then declared it no goal. I don't know how, uh, how you get away with that. There's really no accountabilities for the referees in this league. Uh, the, the call has been there for, for a while, um, that, you know, intent to blow the whistle, but it's, it's really poor. Uh, the way that it's the way that it is in there, it's just really poor. Uh, if, if you want to get a call right, then get a call right. Uh, this, this, people have been asking, how, how did it even get reviewed if that was the case? Well, the review was initiated by the Situation Room of the NHL up in Toronto. Uh, they called it in and, and said that the initial shot, if you read the wording of, of what the NHL put out, the wording was that the initial shot did not go in. I don't think there are many people disputing that. They didn't say anything about, obviously, the second shot, which did go in. Uh, but that was all deemed irrelevant when Mark Jonette said, well, I intended to blow the play dead. Uh, because, again, he wasn't the one that initiated that call. So uh, the NHL uh, rang the, the phone in the, the penalty box booth there, uh, and, and then they said, uh, forget it. If he meant to blow the whistle, he meant to blow the whistle. I don't understand how, uh, how you have calls like that. And the point that a lot of the Flyers are making, and I'd actually done a story that day anyway on, on coaching challenges. So they meant it for coaching challenges, and, and after the game spoke about it again in regards to this rule, they're trying to increase scoring in this league, and they're just doing things to take away goals. doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Doesn't seem like it matches up. Spending a few minutes with Dave Isaac. I thought, Dave, one of the better players over the weekend was uh, the young guy, Jordan Wheel. Uh, two parts then to that, because I know you wrote about Jordan Wheel today. One, why didn't he make the team out of camp? And two, what's his future with the Flyers? Well, he didn't make the team out of camp because they saw him as a natural center and just didn't have space for him. Uh, the, the time at which the Flyers recalled him, they were in such a need for scoring that they said, position be damned, we'll, we'll bring him up here and ask him to play the wing, which is what they did in his limited time last year, uh, and just didn't get enough minutes to be a productive player in that time. Uh, in the 10 games uh, 
that he's had this season. I believe tonight will be 11 this season at the NHL level for him. He's gotten a much better opportunity in that regard. Uh, as for his future, that remains to be seen. He wasn't exactly uh, 100% saying, yeah, I want to stay here, but uh, said that he left it to his agent, which is certainly understandable at this time of year when these, these guys are obviously still trying to get into the playoffs, as unlikely as it may be. Uh, but he's in a strange place. Usually unrestricted free agency doesn't come around until age 27 for a lot of these players. But he's in a, a weird situation. They call it a Group 6 USA where – He's 25 years old but has three years of pro experience uh, and less than 80 games in the NHL. So he's got a lot of AHL experience, and that's what works in his favor right now. Uh, we'll see what happens July 1st. If he wants to be a natural center, I think is is uh, probably one of the big factors here. If he wants to be a center, the Flyers may not have room for him in the NHL. Uh, if he wants to sign a contract anyway and be with the, the Phantoms, then maybe that's something that happens. If he sees opportunity elsewhere to be a centerman in the NHL and somebody's really offering him that, uh, that may be the way that he goes. It'll be interesting to see how that works. Hey, Dave, uh, give us the lowdown in, in your heart of hearts. I mean, you were at Columbus and Pittsburgh coming up. You got them again. Throw in Minnesota. It ain't happening this year, right? It sure doesn't look that way. And here's the thing. Even if the Flyers uh, start winning games, and I think they have one – a uh, streak of, of three games put together since the 10-game win streak, which, again, seems like eons ago. Uh, the 10-game win streak ended on December 14th, and they have had, yeah, one three-game winning streak since then. So that is unlikely in itself. They're going to start winning games. The fact that they would start winning games and get help from other teams makes it really unlikely. Yeah, I think that uh, obviously they're still mathematically alive with 15 games to go here, but uh, it sure doesn't look like it's happening from where I'm sitting. Uh, who's in goal tonight, you know? Steve Mason will be in that the Flyers. And uh, the way that he's played, uh, I would think that he stays in there until the Flyers get mathematically eliminated. Michael Neuvert did himself no favors. He, I still scratch my head at the decision to re-sign him. Uh, Mason's had slightly mm -hmm. better numbers. Neither of them have been very good. Even to say they were good might be a stretch. Uh, very mediocre. Uh, Michael Neuver has had his opportunity in, in Toronto. Uh, it was a gutsy move by Dave Haxall to put him in there in a game that the Flyers absolutely had to win. Uh, and Neuver really wasn't very good at all. So uh, I, I think that it's, it's all about what have you done for me lately. And I would be surprised if Michael Neuver got a game before the Flyers got mathematically eliminated, to okay. be honest with you. All right. Uh, Dave G. Isaac, Flyers and the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets tonight. Very tough opponent in Philadelphia, and that game right here on 97.3 ESPN. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, guys.